Welcome to our lecture online. So now we're going to continue the series on AC circuit analysis. We've already done nodal analysis before, now let's do mesh analysis. Our example here has three meshes. We've already got them pre-marked pre, uh, as I1, I2, and I3, and we want to determine the current in mesh 2, going from bottom to top. So how do we solve this? Well, we add up all the voltage rises and drops in each of the meshes and then solve the equation simultaneously. So starting with mesh 1, start at the bottom left corner, we have a voltage drop across the resistor, so it's minus 8 multiplied times I1. We have a voltage drop across the inductor, so it would be minus J10 multiplied times I1, but notice we also go against I3, so we must subtract I3. And then we have a voltage drop across the capacitor, so it's a minus times a minus J2. We've got to be careful about the signs. We have a voltage drop, but the reactance across the capacitor is a negative J2. And we must multiply that times I1, and multiply times a negative I2 because we go against the current in I2. So minus I2, and then we come all the way around, that adds up to zero. Now we should simplify that equation by combining all the like currents. We have an I1 here, an I1 there, and an I1 there. So we have I1 times a minus 8. Here we have a minus J10, and we have a minus times a minus, that becomes a plus J2, so we get a minus J8, and that belongs to I1. Plus I2, let's see, we have one of those right here, we have a minus times a minus times a minus, that would be a minus J2, and then plus I3. Notice we have one I3, we have a minus times a minus, that becomes a plus J10. And that equals zero. And so there's our first equation from mesh one. Okay, mesh two. Starting at this corner right here, Let's go across the capacitor, that's a voltage drop, and uh, right here, so we have a drop of a minus J2, so that's how we take care of the signs, this is the voltage drop, and we have a minus reactance, and we multiply it the times I2, but notice we also go against the current I1, so we subtract minus I1. Then we go across this capacitor right here, so we have another voltage drop, minus, oh, minus times a minus, Careful here, so we have a voltage drop times a minus J2 reactions, reactants, and times I2, but we go against the current with I3, so we subtract an I3. Then we go across the resistor, so we have a minus 4 times I2. Then we go across the power supply, but in the opposite direction from plus to minus, that's minus 20 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. And that adds up to zero because now we've come all the way around. Simplifying that equation, connect, collecting all the i's, we have an i1 here, so we have a minus times a minus times a minus. So that would be i1 times a minus j2 plus i2. Now notice we have a plus j2 here, another plus j2 here, and a minus 4. So that's a minus 4 plus J4, when you add those two together. And how about an I3? Plus I3. And notice we have a minus times a minus times a minus. That would be minus J2. And now we have a twin, minus 20, 90 degree angle that could go to the other side. So this would be a plus 20 with a 90 degree angle because we just moved across the equal sign, becomes plus 20. And the 90 degree angle is a plus J. So this would be equal to a plus 20J or plus J20. All right, so now we have our mesh one, our mesh two, let's do mesh three. In mesh three, we have a current supply that provides five amps of current, irregardless of what happens in that mesh. So we could simply say that I3 is equal to five amps with a zero degree phase angle, which is simply equal to five. Now notice that we can take this information and replace that in both our first equation right here and our second equation right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace 
I3 with what I3 is equal to over here and over here. So let's label these two equations. Let's call this equation one. Let's call this equation two. And for equation number one, let's go ahead and write what we have. So for I1, we have a I1 times negative eight minus J8. For I2, we have a minus J2. For I3, remember that's equal to five, and five times J10 is plus 50J, so plus J50, and that equals zero. If we now move that to the other side, we end up at I1 times minus eight minus J8 plus I2 times a minus J2 is equal to a minus J50. Notice I have lots of negative signs. Let's multiply both sides by negative one, which means we get I1 times eight plus J8 plus I2 times J2 is equal to a positive J50. And that's a nice first equation in the simplified format. Doing the same for equation number two, we have, uh, notice, yes, we're going to replace the I3. So we end up with an I1 times a minus J2 plus I2 times a minus four plus J4. And now we have a plus I3 times a minus J2. I3 is five, so it gives us a minus J10. And that equals a positive J20. Now moving this to the other side, I end up with an I1 times a minus J2 plus I2 times a minus four plus J4. This goes across, that becomes equal to a positive J30. And let's see here, we could probably multiply everything by a negative one. If we do that, we get I1 times a J2 plus I2 times a four minus J4 equals a minus J30. And there we have a nice second equation which we can then solve simultaneously. So what we should do now is set up the, the uh, matrix in order to solve that because now we have two equations and two unknowns. So what we could do is we could set it up like this. Our first equation gives us an eight plus J8 and we have a J2. The second equation we have a J2 and we have a four minus J4. We multiply that times I1 and I2 which will then give us the plus J50 and the minus J30. And that will then allow us to solve for I1 and I2 when we solve this equation right here, or this matrix right here. So, on the next video, because we're kind of out of room, we'll go ahead and solve this matrix, and we'll find current one and current two, which would then ultimately give us the final current in the circuit. And that is how it's done. Yes. So let's finish this up.